Hi, everybody. My name's Lawrence John. Uh, I'm the founder, with my co-founder here, of a company called Controlio. And we are a personal information management company. So the personal story was that my wife was pregnant. We went to Kitty Care, which is hell on earth. And they tried to put prams in the back of our Audi TT, and they wouldn't fit. And my pregnant wife had to get in the back. And I suddenly realized that these 16-year-old girls knew that we were going to change our car, which is probably one of the most valuable pieces of merchandising information on the web. And the web didn't know. And Audi thought we were going to buy another TT, and we didn't. So I used to be a VC, um, venture capitalist, uh, raised two funds and ran those. And I looked for the company that would be able to exploit that piece of information. Basically, it's highly personal information. Do I want Audi to have it or BMW? Not necessarily. And yet, it would have been useful if they'd had it to me and to them. So what's this all about? So if I've split the audience into two halves, right? If your businesses and your people, then these guys have all of your personal information. You don't really have it. They've got your bank transactions, apps have got your location, right? what you buy, how you buy it, right? where your text message is stored, giant amounts of it. And this stuff is highly valuable to you. So this isn't really a privacy play. right? We're not talking about GCHQ and the rest. We're talking about other things. So we take fairness, efficiency, things like that. So fairness. If these guys can see that you've paid 800 pounds, like I have, four years running for your car, car insurance, but you could have paid 400 pounds, then what they should do is they should bid about 800 pounds, maybe eight, 810 pounds next time you ask. But what you want is the 400 pound offer. And if you had the transparency and the information, that's what you go looking for. But if these guys have your information, that's not what's gonna happen. So the next thing. Right, to do with efficiency. If you had your mobile payment information, right, it, sorry, your mobile information in terms of usage and how much you paid, and you could push a button and find out who's got the best tariff for you out there, and it was EE. At the moment, they can't find you. You can't necessarily easily find them. It's highly inefficient. But if you could push a button and find each other to actually find the best tariff for you, that would make the whole e-commerce market, way, way, way more efficient if you had that information. And lastly, if you're sitting there on Zoopla looking for the best house right, to do with a joined up world, so you find a lovely house, why isn't there a pre-approved how much you can pay mortgage sitting next to it? Okay, all the back end's fixed and all your personal information is plugged into it, highly useful. Okay, these are uses for personal information. Anyway, we've built a platform, we've just launched an open source version of it for people to play with. We're working with partners to build precisely these types of application on top. So we don't build them all, we build them with partners in exactly those areas. And it's giant, right? If you look in the press, everyone, like every day, is talking about abuse of your personal information and why don't you have it back? And the point really is it's about to happen and we're launching products that are making that happen. So what do we want? We want partners who actually give a damn about this and would like to exploit it. So actually five people could completely revolutionize money supermarket at the moment without a 25 million TV campaign, right? You just have to help people analyze the information in their bank, offer them useful services, and you can create giant companies quickly and we're the platform that's helping those types of companies happen. So, it's called Controlia. It's about personal information. We love your help. Okay, very much, Lawrence. Let's. Uh, does anyone have a question for Lawrence? Um, <clears throat> actually, I quite like your idea because I often do the same thing to myself. I draw all my data and try to analysis what is best rational decision I should make based right. on my past performance, but how you actually make recommendations. Do you just purely display the data to the end users or you actually give recommendation based on the data? So, part one, our partners who are expert in the verticals make the recommendations. How they make recommendation? How can you, you make sure they make a fair you, recommendation? Give you two examples, because I don't know if fair exists, so let's talk about fair. We have two partners in the mobile phone tariff space. One will tell you the cheapest tariff, 
Okay? The other one will tell you probably the cheapest tariff, but also they've got shit coverage, terrible customer service, so actually you should do this, and they've got a nice deal on a mobile phone, right, particular phone. Now you can choose which one you go with and which advice you take, and we make those available. They both use your personal information to give you recommendations, which is better than blindness, but best doesn't mean cheapest. Yeah, but I, I don't see that one make my life easier because I, I, I probably imagine each company will come up with a best solution for me. So, and how you compare between them? So, Polly, who's 26, right, who worked alongside us, is really keen on saving 400 pounds a year by work going for Tesco's. She says she's going to do it, and that's fine. And she does need a lot more information. Right? My co-founder just switched his wife to Talk Talk, right? And he should have read about their customer service and things, right? Because they're not going. Right? The first instance was not a happy experience. So it kind of depends on the segmentation, and that happens currently. Some people will read reviews, but at least they can use their personal information to find out what might be the best offers relating to them. Okay. And then my last question is: What's your advantage? Like, I think the entry barrier is quite low in this kind of application. You think the entry, entry barrier is quite low? Um, interesting. So I don't think that the way that you integrate these applications and create the, the ways in which you share data safely, right, with partners, right? So, if you're not careful, you could do these applications in certain verticals and end up with lots of spam, and your personal information ends up with even more companies than it was with before and gets abused. To keep that safe and secure right, is not a low barrier to entry. Okay, one more question. I have, I have one, what, what, one question. How do, you, how do you differentiate yourself from somebody like my data, the government initiative? Uh, they're not trying to build products. They are a legislative framework, and Jobs okay. Gibson wrote it. Mm -hmm and would love applications that will implement it. So that's the There's difference. plenty of PIM services wrapped around this, correct? There's in, yep. in the ecosystem. So how do you differentiate yourself versus them? Um, we should have a longer discussion that's less okay. guarded. Definitely. But most of them are not highly commercially connected. So very often, these people are making a privacy play, mm -hmm. which is lovely, right? And generally, this side of the room, they kind of hate businesses because they abuse your information, okay? Which is fine. Yeah. Unfortunately, these people want the services that the businesses have to offer. Mm -hmm. So actually making the right type of business information connection between the two is the trick, and that's the bit we'd love to chat to you about. Okay, and where exactly is your product at the moment, just out of interest? Do you have any partners on board? Yeah, we do. You do, okay. Yeah, we have three partners on board already, and uh, one partner has a million uniques a month. They have potential to make 100 quid out of any one of those uniques, and they don't make any conversions, right, because they're a publishing company. If they could, it's a giant opportunity for them. The visitors have a chance to actually save money. Yep. Okay. Great. Okay. Lauren, thank you very much. Cool. Thank you. Thanks.